Hey, good morning, Lawrence Street. Welcome to Sunday Morning Online. Today, as we continue going through our series on the way of wisdom, looking at wisdom in our life and all areas of our life, uh, we're going to be looking at relationships and how wisdom needs to be applied to our relationships. There's two Proverbs I just want to share real quickly as you think about relationships. Proverbs 13, 20 says that uh, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. Who we choose to spend our time with and who invests in our life has an immense impact on our lives. Proverbs 27, 17 tells us this, that iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. The Word of God is full of wisdom about relationships, and today as we gather together, we're going to look at the way of wisdom regarding our relationships. Let's pray together. We'll begin our time of worship. Father God, thank you so much for a time where we can gather together, and, and Lord, it is our desire to know you more, to walk with you, and today we're going to, we want to focus, Lord, on, on, uh, on relationships, Lord, that we may walk wisely in our relationships, and we would hold to your word, cling to your word, and the truth that you have for us about how we are supposed to, to do relationships and approach them in our lives. Father, bless our time now as we have gathered. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. in his love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior Hey, boys and girls, today we're looking at relationships, looking at what it means to be a friend, what it means to be a brother or a sister and to live in a family and, and work together, people to people. And so this morning I want to do a look at light because Jesus tells us to be the light of the world. He wants us to shine his light to others. And so as we work with others, we want to be his light. So my question is, I've got three different lights here. What kind of light do we want to be? Do we want to be a candle? Candles are good. They're appealing, and you see them, and you go, ooh. And, and, but you know what? In a dark room, they don't light up very much. There's not much light. And, or maybe we want to be like a lamp. Lamps are nice, and they add some nice lighting to your, your, to your room and give some good glow, and, and you can read a book, and, but you have to be pretty close to read that book. 
Or do you want to be like this big light? Look at this big light. Let me find the switch here. Woo, that's bright, isn't it? What kind of light do we want to be? Do we want to be a light that shines really, really bright for Jesus? Or do we want to be sort of a light for Jesus? Well, of course, we want to be a bright light for Jesus. In Proverbs, we see in Proverbs 17, 7, that a friend loves at all times. And so a friend is going to love and care for people around them. They're going to show kindness so that they can shine a light, so that they can be the light of Jesus. Then in Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 35, um, Jesus has been asked about a commandment. And what's the greatest commandment, he asks? And Jesus says, actually, I'm going to skip down to 37, where Jesus says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So when we look at how we are to be relational with, other pe with boys and girls and friends, how we are to relate to others, we are to love them. We are to be kind to them. We are to show respect. We are to do th things that are well and good for them. We are to care for them. And Jesus goes even further and tells us that we even need to love our enemies. And we need to care for those who don't see the same way that we do. Or maybe completely disagree with what we do. We should still love them as well and care for them. We need to be safe, but we also can still love them and be, and be kind to them. So I'm going to pray for you here in just a moment, and you, I know you'll be praying for me, but let's look at ways this week that we can show the kindness of Jesus to others so that we can shine a light for Jesus. We can shine a light to a world that so badly needs Him. It's not always easy to be kind, so let's pray together and ask for God's help this morning. God, I just thank you. Thank you for this day that you have made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be a light. Help us to be that light that shines to others, which means that we need to be kind and caring, that we need to be understanding, and we need to be respectful of others. Help us to have good friendships. Help us to love those around us. Help us to love our family. Help us to show love to them by caring and being kind to them. I pray for our boys and girls and I pray for myself and pray that your kindness would, would live in our hearts and lives and we would express your love wherever we go. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, friends. It is always good to be together and gather around the Word of God and allow the Word of God to speak to our hearts and our lives. Uh, we have uh, began a, begun a series talking about uh, wisdom for the journey. How do we find wisdom from the journey? We've been looking at the book of Proverbs and, and some other passages of Scripture trying to find wisdom for our journey and our walk with Him. Uh, we began with the incredible nature of in, in introducing the, the value of wisdom in our life. Uh, the wisdom writer in the book of Proverbs says that wisdom cries in the streets. That wisdom is screaming out for all. There's an invitation to all of us who are willing that we can come to the Word of God, find wisdom for living, find wisdom for the journey, and find what we long for to have the best and most meaningful life available to us. It is available for all. It's available where we are, where we live, in the busyness of, uh, of the everyday experience if we'll just listen to what God has to say. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about the wisdom uh, in regards to, when it comes to character, wisdom in regards to character, and we talked about how do you build character and what are, what are uh, some essential elements of character in our lives. Well, today I'd like for us to talk a little bit about wisdom when it comes to relationships. Wisdom for relationships. Uh, what's it mean to be a friend? What's it mean to have a friend? And how, what are those places in our life? I'm going to begin in uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. And uh, we're going to keep your, our finger open because we're going to look at several passages of Scripture today that talk to us about the wisdom uh, that we long for for a relationship. Listen to what the Bible says about uh, wisdom in relationship in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. Wisdom writer says, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Now turn back to chapter 13 and verse 20. Chapter 13 and verse 
20. Listen to what the wisdom writer says there about relationship. He says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Here the wisdom writer says in Proverbs 18, verse 1, whoever, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Uh, this, this is what the wisdom writer says. Alone makes no sense. Alone makes no sense. It is not in the economy or plan of God that we walk a, a solitary life, that we be lone rangers throughout all of life, that alone makes no sense. In chapter 13, verse 20, he says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. He, this is what the wisdom writer says. Friends are good for you. Friends are good for you. And that's the consistent truth that you find everywhere you turn. If uh, you happen to uh, dial in on the Mayo Clinic website and uh, look there, you'll find an article that says, Friendships Enrich Your Life and Improve Your Health, uh, according to Mayo Clinic. And uh, in fact, they have several articles uh, in, in regards to such. You can go to Exploring Your Mind, and they're going to tell you about the scientific benefits of friendship. Listen to the seven scientific benefits, uh, according to several different studies, on what friendships are. Number one, if you have friends, it reduces your stress. Number two, if you have friends, you have better overall health than if you do not have a friend. Number three, if you have friends, you feel less pain. Number four, if you have friends, then you have better cardiovascular health than people who do not have friends. If you have friends, number five, it, you have a longer life. You are promised a longer life. Uh, number six, it prevents obesity. There is a less uh, in occurrence of obesity among those who have, uh, have friends than those who do not have friends. And finally, finally, it says number seven, you'll have increased mental acuity. Uh, you know what? That would be a wonderful thing if we got smarter and uh, it makes you smarter to have friends. Now, these are things that the Bible has told us from the beginning. Uh, God, when he created man, he created man in his own image, breathed into him his nostrils, the very breath of life. And then before sin entered the world and before, before our world was broken and savaged by sin and ravaged by the effects of our rebellion against God, when things were perfect, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. God has a plan, and his plan is that we be relational. He is relational with us. He plans us to be relational with one another. God has a plan for friendships. I want you to take a moment, and I'd like for you to list, just in your notes there, your three to five best friends in life. Uh, I, I'm not talking about your acquaintances. I'm not talking about people you know by name. I'm not talking about people who, uh, here in rural America, we wave at every, everyone we meet on the highway. I'm not talking about the people you wave at. I'm talking about your three to five five best friends, and uh, I, I, I want you to th be thinking about them and, and reflecting on them today as we talk about what is a real friend. Defining friendship and understanding what friendship is is, uh, is a little bit of a problematic thing for us in our world. Uh, Facebook has defined friend for us. Uh, Facebook says a friend is someone you may or may not know who will accept your invitation to be a friend and this person is born to like and comment on your posts so that you feel good about yourself. That's what a friend is, according to Facebook. Is that a friend? Is that what a friend is? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced of this. The Bible tells us that a man who would find a friend must show himself friendly. So how can I be a true friend? How can I be a true and genuine friend? How can I be a godly friend? How can I be a friend made in the image of God the way God is intended for us to do. And I would quickly tell you that I'm, I'm one of the least equipped and least qualified to preach this message because uh, I look at my friendships and I think, boy, I, I am not a very good friend many, many times. I want to be a better friend. So I'm going to preach at me and uh, you'll just kind of have to come along for the ride as we wrestle with what does it mean to be a good friend and how can we be a good friend and, and to do that I thought we'd look at uh, the life of King David here's a man after God's own heart who had incredible relationships he uh, there were some things he did not do well in life but he had some incredible relationships and there are three people three people that walked into his world that uh, were his friends and uh, I think expressed some very distinctive and, and uh, particular realities about what friendship is all about in his life and the first one I want to call your attention to is Samuel Samuel uh, in first Samuel chapter Chapter 16, verses 12 and 13. Uh, this is what happened. Uh, Samuel has come to Bethlehem. Uh, he comes and uh, is he comes, he speaks the word of God into David's life. And, and a real friend is willing to speak the 
the Word of God into your life. A real friend, a true friend, a friend that will encourage you, a friend that will help you on the journey, speaks the Word of God into your life. Samuel came and he spoke the Word of God into David's life. Samuel was the prophet and the judge of Israel. Uh, he is uh, one of the, the most stellar characters of, uh, of Israel of his day. Uh, there were people who uh, would uh, listen on to and hang on every word he spoke. He's come to Bethlehem, and there he's come to make sacrifice. There he's come to throw a party and have a celebration, a worship service, a celebratory worship service before God. And he invites his, his uh, unique and particular guests Jesse and his family. Oh, oh my! What a what a uh, what a coup that was! What a what a privilege that was! And so, with pride and joy, Jesse comes with his six eldest sons to come. Jesse has seven sons. He comes with his six eldest, sends David out to watch the sheep, and he goes to uh, uh, to have celebration to sit down with Samuel. Uh, one by one, those sons come by because uh, Samuel, before they enter into uh, feasting, is going to anoint the next king of Israel. And uh, he looks at Eliab, the oldest son, and he thinks, truly, the, the anointed of God is before me. And God says, don't, don't, no, that's not him. Don't look at outward appearance. God doesn't look at outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And it's not Eliab, and it's not uh, Shema, and it's not uh, Benadab, the third son. It's, it's none of those six older sons. But finally, he calls for David. David, the youngest son, who's evidently been the brunt of comments by his older brothers, the youngest son who was put in a place of obscurity by his dad, the youngest son is spoken, his life is spoken into by Samuel, the prophet of God. He comes, he anoints, speaks life into David's journey and the life of God is manifested in him as he speaks God's word to him. Samuel comes at just the right time and he changes David's destiny. We each need a friend who's willing to come and speak the word of God into our lives. Uh, a, a friend who will come and help shape destiny in our lives who can be in empower us to be a part of the plan of God, the purpose of God, the call of God for our day and for our journey. Samuel would speak the word of God into David's life and Samuel then would challenge David to fulfill that plan. Samuel would speak into David's life and suddenly there was uh, an entirely different lens with which David looked at life. I'm sure that David returned to the sheep but as he returned, he came with a fresh vision, a fresh purpose, and a fresh plan. He was filled with the Spirit of God, and it resulted in this fact that no longer was he simply watching sheep, but he was in a training ground designed by God for God's purpose. And so while he would do battle with a bear and with a lion uh, for standing in the gap for the sheep, he, God all the time was preparing him to do battle with a Goliath from Gath to deliver his people. And, and suddenly in this new lens, David began to be the sweet psalmist of all of Israel. Here is the man uh, that wrote many of the psalms, many of those psalms that we still read and we still use in worship today uh, as, as, as suddenly God put a fresh lens because a friend walked into his life, spoke the word of God, and then that friend continued to pour into that individual, that, into David's life, that he might fulfill the plan of God. We need friends that not only speak the word of God and the will of God into our life, but are willing to come alongside of us and challenge us to obedience and challenge us to faithfulness and challenge us to consistency. The wisdom writer said it this way in Proverbs 27, verse 17, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We need a friend who speaks God's word into our lives and then continues to affirm that word in our lives. If we have one or two individuals that will speak that, we are enormously blessed. Because we have one life, 
One life, and that one life is too quickly spent. And so what we must do is capture every moment and every day we can for the glory and goodness of God. A friend is someone who speaks the Word of God into our lives and then affirms the Word of God and consistently uh, refines the Word of God that we might fit into the plan and call of God in our lives and make a difference. Now there's a second friend that walked into David's life. Samuel was the first one we were going to talk about. There's a second friend who walked into his life and made a significant significant impact in his life and that man's name is Jonathan. Jonathan, he was a friend who would love at all times. We find that in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1 through 4. Jonathan would walk. David and Jonathan were unlikely friends. Jonathan was a prince. David was a shepherd. Jonathan was to inherit a kingdom. David was a fugitive. Uh, Jonathan was a member of the elite. David was a nobody. But they were loyal friends. Wisdom writer says it this way in Proverbs 17, verse 17. A friend loves at all times. A brother is born for adversity. A loyal friend. A friend is, is loyal who loves at all times. To be loyal, faithful friends, we will learn how to love at all times. Proverbs 27, verse 10 says it this way. The wisdom writer says, don't abandon your friend or your father's friend in time of calamity. Jesus said, this, it said it this way in John chapter 15, verse 3. He said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friend. A friend loves at all times. A friend loves when it's easy, and a friend loves when it's tough. A friend loves when it's fun, and a friend loves when it's hard. A friend loves at all times. Jonathan would teach us in his relationship with, with David, not only does a friend love at all times, but a friend stick, friends stick up for each other. Friends stick up for each other. Fast forward the relationship Jonathan and David have to 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. And in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, King Saul has said, I, I'm going to kill David. He's getting in the way of uh, my plan. He's getting away of, in the way of my son. We're going to kill David. He told all of his servants to kill David. And Jonathan speaks up. And Jonathan defends David. And Jonathan tries to make a difference in his dad Saul's life for David. He spoke on David's behalf. When your friend is in a tough place, a real friend steps up and stands with a friend. Friends stick up for each other. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, the wisdom writer says two are better than one. They have a good return for their labor. They have mutual effort. They, have a, they, they lift up their companion. They have mutual support. They keep each other warm. They have mutual encouragement. And they resist attack. They have a mutual strength. Paul and Barnabas exampled that in the New Testament. In the New Testament, Barnabas was the one who sought out Saul or Paul and his conversion, introduced him to the Jerusalem church and the Jewish elders, and uh, opened the door of ministry for the apostle Paul. Uh, then after the first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas were getting ready to go on the second missionary journey. And what happens? But John Mark, who had abandoned them on that first one, Barnabas steps up and says, oh no, he's a good one. We're going to take him with us. And the Contention became so sharp that Paul and Barnabas parted ways. Paul took Silas, Barnabas took John Mark. They had two mission trips and God began to multiply his work. But the reality was, here is a man who is a true and genuine friend who sticks up for his friends and makes all the difference. As a result of that, John Mark is restored. And later on in the ministry of the Apostle Paul, Paul would say, send John Mark to me. He is good for me. He is a blessing to me. Friends stick up for each other. Friends Friends love at all times. They're loyal. Friends stick up for each other. That's what Jonathan and, and David's uh, relationship testifies to us. And friends encourage each other. They encourage each other. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, verses 14 through 17, King Saul is pursuing David. He's hiding in, in caves. He's hiding uh, around mountains. He's hiding in, in the thickets. He's hiding anywhere he can. And uh, finally, with nearing exhaustion, Jonathan seeks out David. And he comes and he seeks out David to strengthen him in the Lord, it says, to strengthen him in the Lord. And there they made covenant, that they were going to be in covenant relationship with each other, that they would support each other. Friends 
encourage one another. The New Testament says it this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, encourage one another, build each other up. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 9, the wisdom writer says, Oil and perfume make the heart glad. The sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. We see that evidenced in Ruth's devotion to Naomi. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 16, 17, she says, Don't urge me to leave you. Where you go, I'm going to go. Where you lodge, that's where I'm lodging. Your people are going to be my people, and your God, he, he's going to be my God. I, I, I'm with you, and, and what an encouragement to him. It reminds me of, uh, uh, of a great story in theater, uh, a great story in theater. Um, a book I read years and years ago was uh, uh, J.R. Tolkien's the, uh, the Trilogy of the Rings and The Hobbit. I, I enjoyed those books and looked forward to when the movies came out many years ago. And uh, Becky and I have enjoyed all those movies. In fact, we see those again from time to time. Uh, Frodo. Frodo Baggins is uh, the bearer of the ring, and he is the one who's going to take this ring that's going to destroy, destroy mankind. He's going to take this to uh, uh, Mount Doom, and there they're going to throw it into the fire, and it's going to be destroyed. And the fellowship of those who are a part of that begin with, with Frodo's gardener, Samwise Gamgee. Uh, he has nothing to uh, commend himself to this great task. He's a little guy, and they're going to face uh, in incredible odds and, and, and walk into horrible battles. He's not, he doesn't have a lot to commend himself, but he is a devoted friend. Finally, if you fast forward to the journey... Frodo is nearing the end of the journey, but he can't take another step. He can't, doesn't know if he can carry on. He doesn't know if he can do anything else. He's just collapsed emotionally, physically exhausted and worn out. Sam tries to carry the burden for him, but he cannot. And finally, Sam says this. I may not be able to carry this burden for you, Frodo, but I can carry you. And he reaches down, picks up his friend and carries him to the end. All of us need a Samwise in our lives, someone who will encourage us. Friends, friends speak the word of God into our lives that elicits the call of God upon our lives and enables us to be what God intended us to be. Friends, friends encourage one another. They are loyal and devoted to each other. They stick up for each other. They encourage one another in everything they face. We see that in Jonathan's life. But there is a third individual who walks into David's life that speaks to us about what a friend is, what a friend does. His name is Nathan. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, beginning in verse 7, we begin to hear the story of Nathan. Friends speak truth to one another. That's what Nathan did for David. He spoke truth into his life. Now David uh, is now king. Uh, God is doing great things in his life. It's the spring of the year. It's the time for kings to be out at battle, but David is not out at battle. David's sitting around on, on the rooftop looking around to seeing what kind of mischief he can get into when all of a sudden he spies Bathsheba. Bathsheba is the wife of one of his mighty men, the granddaughter of his most trusted, uh, his most trusted uh, counselor Ahithophel. And as he sees Bathsheba, he desires her and, and he lays with her. They, uh, they can, she conceives. Uh, it's, a, it's a horrible thing. He invites Bathsheba's husband back from the battlefront, Uriah. He uh, gets him drunk, hoping that he'll go down and be with his wife and he can, he can hide his sin. But uh, Uriah was a man of sterling character and would not, would not as a result of that, Eventually, David would see that Uriah would be killed at the battlefront and he thought he had covered up his sin, but he had not hidden it from God. Nathan, the prophet of God, comes, tells David a story about a man who had many flocks and many sheep uh, and, a, and a dear friend who was poor who had one little ewe lamb and he loved that ewe lamb and he, and he cherished that little ewe lamb and uh, visitors came to visit the wealthy man. Uh, and so he sent out and slew the one ewe lamb of the poor man and served it to his neighbor. David was incensed. David said uh, all kinds of judgment should fall upon that man. And then it was that Nathan pointed a finger at David and said, David, you are the man. You 
or that man. I'm going to tell you, it takes a real friend to speak truth when it may not be welcome. As a result of that confrontation, David would pen Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. As a result of that confrontation, David was restored to God. The wisdom writer says in Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5 and 6, Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. The wounds of a friend are faithful. When you have a friend who is loving and faithful enough to tell you true, you have found a great friend, a real treasure. Friends are present. They show up for each other. Nathan came when it wasn't easy to come. He spoke when it wasn't easy to speak, and he walked into David's life. Friends are present. They show up. Paul spent three years planning the church at Ephesus. It was the believers at Ephesus who would continually support him. It was the believers at Ephesus who would walk with him to the shore, kneel down weeping when they knew he was headed to Jerusalem for imprisonment and eventual death. Hebrews, the author of the Hebrews tells us this, way, this in chapter 10. Let us not forsake out the assembling together of ourselves but let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. We've got to walk into each other's life and speak truth. Because the model of the gospel tells us we've got to step beyond friendship. The model of the gospel says we have got to step beyond friendship into family. When we're born again, we're born into the family of God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ and should conduct ourselves in such a manner. Jesus told us to love each other so dramatically, so radically, that all the world would understand we are true and genuine followers of Jesus by how we love each other. John, said, said, John the Beloved said it this way. He said, if we do not love each other, we do not know God. We are born into family. And we need to model that in our world. Our world, our neighbors, our acquaintances are praying that it's real. We should show love that persists in our world today. What does it mean to be a friend? Certainly it's evident from Scripture that God has created us to be relational, to be a friend and to have a friend. I think in David's life, we can see that true friends speak truth into each other's life and, and consistently affirm that so that we can answer the call of God and be involved in the plan of God. Jonathan teaches us that true friends uh, love at all times. They are loyal to a fault. Nathan tells us that true friends confront us with truth. True friends, we must be true friends so that we can have true friends. Ty Cobb, coming to the close of his life, uh, had wealth, had uh, recognition, had many, many things, was asked uh, what, what it, uh, his thoughts on, on life. He said, you know, if I had life to do over again, I'd do some things different. And one of the things I'd do is I'd have more friends. And we can never have a friend until we have God as our friend. We can't find real friendship until we are a friend of God. John Newton, author of Amazing Grace. John Newton, slaver. John Newton, preacher of the gospel, repentant, broken preacher of the gospel at the close of his life, was struggling with his memory, was struggling to keep everything together. His friends were gathered around. He, he was struggling to remember and struggling to know. And he says, I just know two things. This is all I know. I just know two things. I know this. I am a great sinner and Jesus is a great Savior. And Man, when we get that right, we can be right with God so we can be right with others. Well, hey, friends. Um, I hope, I pray, that we wrestle through with God's word that we might be real friends as we find wisdom for the journey. Well, hey, church family, as we close our time out together, let's take a moment and pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you 
for your truth. We thank you for your word. Uh, the gift it is to us that we may know you and that we may know how to live. It is our desire to be, to be friends and to be, uh, to be fathers, to be sons, to whatever relationship we have, Lord, that we would do that in a way that honors you, and that we would seek to be a blessing to those who are around us, and God, that we would just be an example of Christ to, whom, to all that we encounter. We love you, Lord, and be with us in the upcoming week that we may just uh, see you at work in our lives and be a blessing to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.